So the big chicken, right, he talks with like a southern gentleman's accent, and the little bird, he keeps saying, I'm a chicken hawk. It's fucking comic genius. You guys got to check it out. <laughs> What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Beastly Thought Show Live. We got a lot to talk about today. Uh, we've been playing, what have we been playing? We've been playing all sorts of shit, but obviously the big stuff is the Black Ops 3 beta. Uh, I've got a little surprise for you guys, something I've been playing that you're not going to expect uh, and Ooh. loving. Uh, I actually, I've been all over the place. I have been so busy this week. I, I went to Florida on vacation. I bought a new car. Uh, the, my kids started high school, um, like, orientation. So it's been a really busy week. I haven't had much time for Destiny. But that may work out because I think people want to hear about something besides Destiny today. So I'm yes. going to start off by saying, what have you guys been playing? And I think right. we've been playing the same thing. Yeah, well, uh, I actually started the Call of Duty uh, Black Ops 3 beta the day that it, it was available. But before that, I played uh, a PSN game called uh, Lara Croft and the Temple of Osiris. And Kate and I actually marathoned that game and beat it. Very fun game. It was a free, free game, right? Free game. It's really fun. Uh, I, didn't, I didn't think I'd like it as much as I did, but we couldn't stop playing it until the credits rolled. It was a really, really good game. It's a small, small potatoes compared to what we played. Uh, later on in the week, which is the Call of Duty Black Ops 3 beta. Uh, I think it was available Thursday. And uh, as soon as it was available, we jumped right into it. And it's amazing. Uh, it, it, I think it really is what people have been wanting, uh, especially after Ghost and Advanced Warfare. Uh, this feels like they Treyarch has really hit a sweet spot in Call of Duty. All I can say right now is that this game is unadulterated fun. If you like Call of Duty you're going to like this game. If you like what made Call of Duty good years ago, you're going to like this game. If you like all right, this game, I, need, I need you to get way more specific here because okay. there's all sorts of reasons people like Call of Duty. There's the old school Call of Duty guys that grew up on COD 4, Modern Warfare 2, that like, you know, feet on the ground, tactical, fast, action-paced gunplay. That's what this is. That's there's, what this the is. Guys, there's the guys from that grew up with Black Ops 2 that really like that, well, faster <laughs> action gunplay Gunplay, brighter colors, you know, really quick movement, and then there's the uh, advanced warfare crowd that really likes this super high mobility stuff. So, what am I going to get oh. with Black Ops Three? All right, as far as the the super high mobility, that's been totally toned down. Uh, mm -hmm. Treyarch, I think they understood that with the last game, they kind of overstepped their boundary and lost a lot of the the fans of the series because Call of Duty and Advanced Warfare at least didn't feel like Call of Duty. So that's been toned back. The game is just like Black Ops 2. It does feel very similar to Black Ops 2. You have this thrust jump that you use very often. You also have this high momentum slide, right, Ravi? That lets yeah. you slide about eight feet every time you do it. So pretty much any time you go around around a corner, you're going at high velocity, sliding and shooting at the same time. A uh, new thing that they added to this game they took from other games of, of this genre is the ability to wall run, which is, to me, the best way to, to traverse any stage in this game. You can run on any wall. It's not just specific walls. You can run on the side of a mountain if you want. And it works so well. There's so much tactical changes uh, when you take that into account because you can be running around a corner. You're on a wall. Someone comes around on the floor. They have no idea you're above them and you take them out while you're running on a wall. Uh, they brought back a lot of things from the Black Ops series, uh, like, like Guardians, like the, some of the, the particular types of kill streaks, okay. some, of the, some of the older weapons. You remember the race car, the little RC car from yeah, Black Ops? Yeah, I hated 2? that thing. Something, something really <laughs> similar. Something really similar has been uh, brought into this game as well. Uh, something similar to the dogs in Call of Duty Ghosts is here. Okay. Uh, if you have, and I'm trying to remember the name of it, uh, Robbie. The big tires that drive around. The wraps. Okay, those things are. If you see them, you're in a lot of trouble. I Actually, love the wraps. Those are the coolest things. It's like these giant yeah. spike balls of death that drive around on the map and explode when they get up yeah. to someone. Oh the my god, it's the coolest the thing to watch those things just drive around on the map. I love it. It's so All cool. Right. So I haven't played the game, right? I haven't had a chance to download the beta, and it looks like I'm gonna miss it if I don't jump on this thing quick. But Tell me how it feels. Does it does it feel like Black Ops 2? Does it feel like Modern Warfare, like a Modern Warfare game? Like, how does it feel? It feels incredibly similar to Black it's... Ops 2, but the movement has been refined. The gunplay has been refined. I will say the best part about this, too, they fixed the hit detection for Black Ops 2. The hit detection is spot on. It is so is it good. Really? You, yeah, they've completely fixed it. The net code is fantastic. They have dedicated servers even in the beta. There how's, is the, live... how's the time to kill? How, how fast do people go down? 
It's uh, a very fast time to kill. I would say it's not quite as fast as Ghosts, but it's about the same as Advanced Warfare. It's incredibly fast, much faster than Black Ops 2, because that time to kill is so good, and the hit detection is so spot on. Like now, It's a good time to kill. Something that they changed in, in Black Ops 3 that was never in any other Call of Duty games. Uh, how many still are there? Like 10? Your you're, uh, elastic banding, you're, you're, you're breaking up there, Beastly. Yeah, you were. Oh, can you guys hear me now? I can hear you now, but you're going in and out. Okay. <laughs> well, what I was saying is they've added specialists to the game. Uh, I don't know exactly how many types of specialists there are, but specialists bring a whole new paradigm to the match. Uh, if you're a specialist, depending on which one you choose, there is an offensive and a defensive move that you can have during the match. And you, you actually gain that the more you, you kill enemies and walk around on the map. It actually is a bar, a gauge that fills up. Once it fills up, you get a special move, which is kind of like a super move, like in Destiny. And you're able to use that out on the map against enemies. There's one that I use the most. It's called Glitch. Whenever you're around enemies, and maybe you're in a lot of trouble, if you glitch, you will teleport to wherever you were about five or six seconds mm -hmm. before. It's like a rewind button for you and you alone, right? Yes, just for you and you alone. But there are so many different types of specialists. There's one that uses the sparrow bow and arrow <laughs> that when they shoot you with it, you explode into like a thousand pieces. Blood and guts goes everywhere. Uh, there's one that comes down kind of like um, in Destiny. You come down and you smash the ground. and has Gravity a large, spikes. Yeah, yeah, the gravity spikes. And anyone in that vicinity gets blown up. And I think it's awesome. So far, I really, really enjoyed the game. I thought that the beta was going to be over today, uh, but it's actually going to be over tomorrow. And if they it was going to be, yeah, so they extended it for a day for the people who didn't pre-order the game uh, and wanted a little bit more time. But it's really fun so far. I don't really have anything that I can pick out of the game to say I really don't like this. Mm -hmm. I I like this kind of the way I did when Black Ops Two, the first time I played, I was like, wow, this is something new. They didn't go too far outside of the box here, like with that EXO movement ping-ponging. The level design is great. It is great, Briar, for this type of momentum, this mm -hmm. type of movement. Uh, you can get to the other end of the map really fast if you know what you're doing, jumping from wall to wall, running down past enemies. It really feels good. You feel like Spider-Man with a badass gun. Uh, and, so and it's a, you, guys, it's really you guys are saying that the, the hit detection is really good. How's the lag? Because I heard that that's why the, the beta got extended is because they're having issues with the lag. The only time the connection goes down is when they would update the servers, when they would tweak maybe the guns or some of the specialists, an update would go out, and what would happen was for the next, I'd say, 30 to 45 minutes, there would be a lot of lag in matches and a lot of connection issues, but mm -hmm. give it an hour, just kind of take a break from the game, come back, and everything is fixed. That's the awesome. only time I've seen it lag. The connection is awesome. I mean, they have the dedicated servers. When you hit the options button, they have a live ping bar, so you can see your connection in game and tell if you're lagging or not. I think that's a phenomenal option. I love that. So this game is set in the near future. How are the weapons? Do the weapons look like uh, modern weapons? Do they look like mo like new versions of modern weapons? Like, like could you connect to the weaponry? I, I feel like every weapon I've seen so far in this game reminds me of Black Ops 2. It's not really super far futuristic. It does seem mm -hmm. viable that these could be real guns in a, in a near future. Uh, I haven't seen anything that's really crazy. No lasers like you see in Advanced Warfare. Nothing like that. Mm -hmm. Everything is projectile based. It feels like it's a tangible possible reality. Uh, and I've liked all the guns I've used so far. Robbie is actually unlocked because he's been going fucking ape shit in this game. He's almost to, <laughs> to the max level that you can get. And he's unlocked uh, this new specialist, and he has this, like, um, a motorized spinning gun that just... He has a death machine, basically, in his arm. His name is uh, Reaper. He's a robot, and yeah. he is so cool. When you kill him, he's like, enemy down. I can't do the voice, but it sounds amazing. It is so <laughs> badass. Overall, Black Ops 3, I was so optimistic getting into this, but this is going to bring me back into Call of Duty. Absolutely. This game is That's great to amazing. Hear. I That's have great to hear. Absolutely. Almost nonstop for the past few days. This is an incredible refinement of what Black Ops 2 does. I mean, this is just one of the best feeling Call of Duties in years. The hit detection is spot on. The thrust movement feels amazing. It works with, with the map design. The maps are all excellent. Hunted, Combine, Evac, they're all awesome maps. They all make sense with the thrust jumps and the wall running. Even the swimming. Which yeah, is a, you can swim now, Brian. Swimming is awesome. Like, it's really good, and it makes a lot of sense. It creates, like, these new flank routes, and... yeah. This well, game is going to get me back into Call of Duty. This is amazing. I am so hooked on this game. It's 
That's over all. five minutes. Everything Call of Duty does best. I just I can't wait for the final game. I'm uh, so. Is there an AK-47? There is a gun very similar to that there called the AK-47. It's basically the same weapon. Yeah. Okay. Well, all right. Yeah. Then I'll, I'll buy it. Kate uh, told me to tell you, Briar. She said she's going to get you for not playing. Now I'm going to tell her that life kind of pulled you in this week. Hey, you know, you know <laughs> what are you going to do, man? Check it out. I couldn't. I could not convince her to not play. She's actually playing right now. I said, yeah. the day. You might want to ask her to get off because your internet really is <laughs> suffering right now. <laughs> I said, I said, please. She said, I can't. I can't stop. So she's like going crazy on the game, and and Robbie was right, man. Something that they never had in the Call of Duty before. You can go underwater and shoot people underwater, man. Yeah, yeah. I've, seen, I've seen video. I've I've watched it's, a lot of video. I just haven't had a chance to play it. it All right, so really, really. And one of my biggest problems with Advanced Warfare was that the I loved the the increased movement. Right, it felt so perfect with the being able to click in the stick to use that boosting stuff. Does it feel as well? Like, did they pull it off as well as they pulled with Advanced Warfare? Like, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, I, think it's better. That, yeah. I think it's better. It's better. That's yeah, great. I do. Uh, they changed a few things. You don't have to hold in the stick anymore to run. You mm-hmm. click it and you just push it forward. If you jump, you flip, you roll, you continue just with that momentum, and your character will continue to run. So mm-hmm. you're not destroying your controller. You're just doing the minimal effort, and you're moving around as fast as fluent. It feels really good to me. In Titanfall, there was a similar mechanic where you could wall run, and the longer you kind of kept a chain of wall running going, like if you jump to one wall, then you bounce to another, and then you bounce to another, your movement speed would get faster and faster. Is there anything like that? Or are you limited in your movement speed? You can chain movements together, like say if you come off a wall run and then you boost in the air, and then when you do a little thrust slide, you can kind of chain these movements together to go faster. Like you can really get a good momentum if you know how to chain them. I mean, this beta really is just a culmination of all the best elements of Call of Duty. It's so refined. Like, you can tell Treyarch has had so much experience in this franchise, and they are putting all their effort into this game. Like, it's just, it's so, it feels so good. The shooting, the movement, the wall running, it all works together, and the map supports it. I mean, this is one of the best Call of Duties. All right, so you mentioned the maps there. Okay, that's one of the pro- that's one of the biggest problems I had with Advanced Warfare is that they invented this new movement type and it felt awesome and it was so intuitive you hardly had to learn it. Right, yeah. all you had to do was basically pick up the game. Ten minutes later, you're flying all over the place like a crazy person, <laughs> and it was so intuitive and it felt great. But the maps didn't seem designed for it at all because, like at any point, that game felt like chaos because there's just like you you could wipe out the entire team. <laughs> trying to take out a, you know, to take a control point, and two seconds later, that entire team is back because they could just fly across the map. They so could fast. just jump up and get, like, every angle. Right, yeah. and you never, you could never predict where they were going to come from because, like, every rooftop was accessible. There's, like, eight windows looking in at, at you. So the maps, the maps feel better designed for the movement in this? It is, for sure, for sure. I mean, in every area that I've been in on this beta... I didn't feel like that there was absolute chaos all around me. Mm-hmm. People ping pong. Like it was manageable. You could get yes. score streaks. Yes, like, reliably. you get score streaks like you did back in the old days. Yeah, you can get an eight, nine, ten kill streak, and that doesn't happen at Advanced Warfare. It just doesn't happen because there's always someone with a record code right on your face. Yeah, the uh, score streaks are awesome too. Like yeah. they're really powerful. Oh are there bitch bombs? No, no. Un- unfortunately, no. <laughs> uh, I, I heard are there the claymores. Trailer. Like, are there any of these like leave behind? Like set it, you know, a sniper in a window sets there's a, a there's sets like a, a claymore spike. on the door so you can never get in on him. Is there anything you can like put that? A spike strip down. Uh, I think it's what it's called. It looks like um just a cylinder. You throw it down, it lands on the wall of the ground. People run by it and they they explode. So those have returned. I haven't seen anything like claymores, but those do do exist. It's actually something I'm using now because I've become accustomed to using bitch bombs. But yeah. they they <laughs> actually. They actually do. They, they include a lot of stuff <laughs> from the older Call of Duties. It feels really good, Briar. I mean, really, really good. I'm so back into this. I haven't played anything since it's made yeah. How many maps are there? Uh, Four. They, they released three initially, and then I think uh, yesterday they released a fourth one. As yeah, well it's as, a winter as, sort of map. It's called Stronghold. Awesome. Have you guys? Uh, I've seen that you can like kind of paint your equipment, like your guns yeah. and your knives yeah. and stuff like that. Have yeah. you guys experimented with that? Are you enjoying doing that? That extra customization? That's something that was in Black Ops One and was not in Black Ops Two. I was really disappointed to see it gone. Yeah, Black Ops Two just had uh, the thirty-two slides you can put together. No, I haven't done it. Kate's actually done it, and she said she really liked it. But I just every time I get an opportunity to play, I just grab the controller and go. I'm trying to get every match I can get before this beta is over. 
It's mm-hmm. been a long time since I felt like that. Especially right. I, I, have. I don't really need to ask this question because you guys basically answered it, but do you think the beta was a good idea? Did it, did it bring the Call of Duty fan base? Oh, yeah. The guys that they lost in Advanced Warfare? Absolutely. Oh, yes. So you, yes. do you think this was more of a beta, or do you think it was more of a advertisement saying, hey, <laughs> get back here. We made a damn good one of these. I, I know you're going to like it. It's just the last couple sucked. Yeah. Basically, <laughs> yeah. If that's the case, Briar, it worked. And in the last two days, they gave it to everybody on PS4, and Xbox One will have theirs in a couple of days. Um, I think it's a good advertisement. Call of Duty's been suffering. A lot of people have been down on it. And you've said it yourself. People have been down on Call of Duty because it's a popular thing to do. I think people are going to be happy with this one. I yeah. honestly see, I see that. This Every year, really the people playing the current Call of Duty call it the worst Call of Duty ever made. <laughs> and the one yes. from the previous year, they say that was the best one. The best, yep. Yeah. Uh, I think that that pattern may have ended. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to say that Warfare yeah. is the best. But it, it was... It was a pretty consistent pattern every year. Well, let, let me just say, man, you guys seem really excited about this. Let me just say this, okay? When I first met you, before we actually known each other, mm-hmm. you were a Call of Duty guy, and oh, I yeah. was so excited every time I watched your videos. Like this guy is a fucking animal. I cannot wait to see what you do in this game. I cannot wait to see what you do in this game. I used to play Call of Duty every day, right? Oh. You know, like I used to jump on it. Maybe it was half an hour, you know, before I went to work, or maybe I was waiting, you know, we, we, me and uh, the wife were going out on a date, so I would, you know, play for 20 minutes while she blow-dried her hair, but I, I'd play every day. Maybe it was for six hours on a Saturday, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I lost, like, Advanced Warfare completely lost me. Like, me too. It, it did not feel like a Call of Duty game. It just, I had no interest in it whatsoever. This is nothing like Advanced Warfare, oh, Briar. God, you, right now, this is like Black Ops 2 taken to the next level. Yes. And it's all the best parts of Black Ops 2, and they fixed all the stuff that didn't work, like the hit detection. Yeah, and the movement feels awesome. This is such a refined game. Like, I really do think you need to play this, because this could get you back into Call of Duty. It's going to get I, me I, back I, into I, Call I predict Duty. it will. I predict it will. I think you're going to have a conundrum, Briar, because I know that you love Destiny. This is a different kind of game than Destiny, so you don't have as much of a reason to come back. But it's so fun. I told Kate, I said, I'm back. You know, Call of Duty, that's my number one thing I'm focused on right now. When the game comes out, that's all I'm going to put my time in. It's mm-hmm. so fun. I can't I'm wait to see the, the, new, the new levels. The four levels that they gave us are all awesome, right? Yeah. All awesome, and it's colorful. It's not bland. The characters don't just sink into the background, so you know where people are at. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. I cannot wait for the day this comes out. It's do you think these specialist abilities are going to have, like, uh, do you think there's going to be overpowered ones, like definitely overpowered setups? Are there overpowered guns right now? I haven't been paying attention to the Call of Duty community. Is there one weapon right now that everybody's using? I haven't, uh, I haven't noticed that personally, but the thing is, once you, uh, once you activate your specialist ability and you die, that ability's gone until the bar rejuvenates itself. Yeah. So all you got to do is shoot somebody once if they're using it. The ones I've seen, once people get a good good hit off on you, you feel like a fool exploding from a, uh, from an arrow. But it's pretty awesome. But I haven't seen anything that's truly overpowered. You can use a glitch once, mm-hmm. you know, to get you out of trouble, and sometimes you can come back around the corner and kill two or three guys. Treyarch so. has embraced the lag. They've made it a special <laughs> ability. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got five seconds. It's awesome, Briar. It really, it really is. I can't it, wait to play it. It's awesome. You guys are really selling it. I've, I've watched a couple of videos of it while I was, you know, for instance, uh, waiting for my credit report to come or uh, waiting for the new car to come around that I need to test drive. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went to I'm really looking that. forward to playing it. I, I went to all that last week with the kids in high school and stuff. Brett started high school this year, so, yeah, I know exactly what you're going through, Dad. <laughs> yeah, there's definitely isn't stuff that's that overpowered in this bay. Like, there's some very strong weapons, mainly mm-hmm. the M8A7, which is basically the M8 from Black Ops 2. It's back. Yeah, that was it's, one of my favorite guns. It's yeah. still amazing. It's still probably like is the best. Still a four burst, like a, a like a four shot burst. Yes, it's a four shot burst. It fires really fast, like it did before. It feels mm-hmm. just like it. The other gun that's really strong is the Razorback SMG. It's because it literally has like no recoil and it has the range of almost an assault rifle. That oh, gun is insanely good, but it's not quite that overpowered. Sounds OP. <laughs> it's no, it's very good, but the damage mm-hmm. is kind of weak. That's why it's not overpowered. Can so. the M8 kill in one burst? Yes, if you get like if you're really accurate and you hit those bursts dead on, you're gonna be melting people. It yeah, Briar, so you're good. going to be melting people, Briar. One of the <laughs> things that I miss, one of my favorite uh, Call of Duty games was Black Ops One, 
And one of the reasons I liked it so much is because most guns killed relatively slow, and that was partially due to uh, somewhat poor hit con- hit connect or hit detection in that game. Yeah. But what made it fun was that just because you got the first shit shot <laughs> doesn't mean you were going to win the gun the first fight. shit. In this in this game, like, are you able to like take a shot, duck behind cover, turn yes. around, and, and wipe somebody out? Yes, yeah. I have. Right. This time, you got to Everything you everything you guys say about this game has me excited about it. I, I, Briar, I can't say it enough, and I'm not bullshitting. I really, really, this is like one of the, the happiest moments I've been in Call of Duty since I've known in the series. This is Call of Duty. I feel, I feel like this is the true evolution of a good Call of Duty game. It's not taking a step in the wrong direction. I don't feel like it's taking one in the wrong direction at all, and this is just a beta. Uh, I love Black Ops 2. I felt like this should have been the game that came after Black Ops 2. I mean, they took things from other Call of Duty games. They took aspects of what Advanced Warfare was, but they refined it and made That's it That's what they should be doing, right? It's like yeah. take the best stuff that you've learned in the past, move forward with it, and leave the bad shit behind. That's what they don't do that. That's what they did. I, I think this will definitely solidify it in people's mind that Treyarch is the the premium Call of Duty. Oh yeah, they're the, yeah. yeah they 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 really changed the game, and I and didn't. We haven't even talked about the safeguard mode too. Remember that? Oh man, right. Yes. We got to tell Ryer, tell Ryer about what this is. Right, I played this with Robbie last night. Kate and I and Robbie, we were in there. We won every every game, but explain to Briar what this mode is, Robbie. You played it more than I have. So there's a brand new mode in the Black Ops 3 beta. They just updated it the other day called Safeguard. This is like something that's never been in Call of Duty before. What there is is there's a robot at the start of a match, and if you're on the defending team, what you have to do is your team has to boot up this robot, and you have to walk with him to the end of the map and get him to the goal. One person has to be standing by the robot at all times or he won't be moving, and the other team has to do damage to the robot to take him down, and then the robot has a few seconds to reboot. So you can either push up ahead of the robot and take out all the enemies and then start walking them forward, or you can be constantly escorting them. There's a lot of strategies in it. It is so much fun, and there is no mode like this in Call of Duty. It's super Yeah, cool. it, it's, it's totally new, revolutionary to me. Robbie told me and Kate last night, he said, you guys got to try this new mode. And we, we went into it, and I saw this robot get up and start walking with us. I'm like, what are we doing? All these guys are coming out of the woodwork. We were taking them out. And they would shoot the robot, and after a prolonged period of damage taking, the robot would, like, break and fall over. Then he'd have to reboot, get up, you'd have to get next to him, and then continue to escort him. It's a new mode. It's awesome. I'm really enjoying that mode. Robert, but I, I love everything Treyarch's doing with this, and you know that they're not going to show everything right now. No, no. They better not. I mean, from what they've shown, I'm super excited about it, guys, and that's pretty much all I can say about it so far. I'm loving it. Uh, it's an awesome game. I'm really happy Treyarch did what they did here. Yeah. All right, so you guys have put, you've piled ample amounts of love on this game. I want to hear two complaints. <laughs> it's a beta. Reject. You know, re- yeah. Go ahead. It's not out yet. So there is a specialist called Nomad, and he has a reject ability. This is basically Last Stand. That's not uh, good. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> so what happens is when Nomad gets killed, you don't technically get a kill on him. He goes down into like the last stand position, and there's this thing called Reject. So you can hit both the bumpers and bring him back to life, and there's this cloud of green smoke that appears. And oh. basically, yeah, so he can save himself. It's basically I, last stand. I saw that happen yesterday, and I was wondering what the hell it was. I never picked the Nomad. Number two. <laughs> Tack grenade called the concussion, like basically not the flashbang where your screen goes white, but the one where you're disoriented and you slow, slowly move. That thing can be really frustrating because it lasts really long and you are super disoriented. Like it is impossible to shoot anymore. <laughs> Those are the two things that are complainable. But other than that, flawless beta, and I love it. This is going to bring back into Call of Duty. All right, Beasley. It's beta. They got time to fix this stuff. Give me two complaints. Uh. My first complaint is it is not out yet. <laughs> the actual game. Not good enough. You better. <laughs> That's not a real complaint. Look, look, <laughs> I, look, Robbie's like level 500. I'm only level like 23. He's I'm level 42, basically. <laughs> <gamer. laughs> uh, from what I've seen, I would agree with him that last, last, you know, when the guy goes down and he's not dead, that's definitely one. They needed to take that out years ago. Uh, but that's that would be the only thing I can think of. I, I saw a really nice perk where a guy split off into three and they all went three different directions, and you didn't know which was the real one, mm. that can be a little frustrating. Psychosis, yes. Yeah, I, I, I killed the There's two. There's no way to tell? 
No, they are covered. Zero around. indication that which one is the right one. They all look just like the regular guy. I think they they all when he does that they all have like a aura around them, all three of them. So you mm. know that there's something going on. Yeah, it's, it's like, like a blue aura, and you yeah, like they don't attack you or anything. They just they rush run towards the decoys. You. Yeah, and so and they take they take real damage. So oh, really? I'll kill so yeah, you they take shoot them, damage. you can't tell that they're. Yeah, they go down like after the, the regular amount of uh, damage that he would take. So that kind of confused me a little bit. I guess yeah, they're I trying. New, <laughs> yeah, you know they're trying new things, and, and, and with any great thing, of course, there's going to be things to, to to frown upon. But for the most part, I'm loving it, man. That's, That's awesome. That's awesome. I'm psyched for it, man. I can't wait for it to come out. November 11th, sixth. Oh. Sixth. It's yes, mine. The day, the day of. I'm taking that day off. All right. Well, I didn't play any Black Ops Three. Yeah. But I did get highly addicted to Heroes of the Storm this week. You guys Whoa. check this out yet? No. no. All right, so this is Blizzard's new MOBA, right? Oh, I did Blizzard download MOBAs. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, League of Legends, Dota, mm-hmm. you know, it's like this kind of thing. It's weird that Blizzard finally released one because basically they're basically the other two are based on <laughs> Blizzard games, which is, I don't know, there's people know about know more about that than I could ever say. But this game is fun, and it's it's way more accessible than other MOBAs that I've watched and attempted to get into and said, nah, this isn't for me. This is fun, and uh, I like it a lot. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I don't know if it's going to be like a, a long-term love affair, but I, I like it quite a bit, and I really would like to see it come to the PS4 and Xbox One because I feel like if they just took the controls from Diablo PS4 edition and brought it to this game, they'd have an instant hit on their hands on the on the consoles. This game is uh, it's simplified in a way that it's very easy to understand. There's a tutorial uh, that they kind of bring you through how to how to use your character, how to do objectives, how to you know see around the map, just like how to play the game, which is something that the other ones didn't do for a long, long time. So. It's a fun game, and it's it's beautiful. There's a bunch of different maps. There's a bunch of different characters. Uh, it's free to play, so you don't even have to pay anything. You just start playing right up. You know, you download it and start playing. It's great. I'm, I'm having a blast with this game. I've heard really, really good things about it. I haven't uh, gotten into it, but, yeah, I've heard a lot of people are enjoying it. Yeah. Uh, it comes out on Mac and PC, so I don't even have to... I, when, when I heard you mention, mention that <laughs> <Of course> not. <laughs> for some reason I was thinking that you were talking about Invoker's Tournament on PS4, which is the free-to-play MOBA on PS4. No, I'm talking about Heroes of the Storm. It's made by Blizzard. Blizzard's the company that makes uh, World of Warcraft and mm-hmm. yeah, Diablo. Champions of Diablo. Europe and all that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm shocked how much I'm loving this game. In fact, I, I was playing it this afternoon right before we started the show, and I did not want to stop the match I was in. To start the show, and that's why I was so late. <laughs> oh, Briar. <laughs> What's happening here? <laughs> What's going on? All right, so uh, how long do the matches last? Uh, about f- uh, anywhere from like 15 to 20 minutes, it seems like. It, I've had a couple go really fast, like uh, 5 to 10 minutes, uh, and some go a little bit longer. But I've heard of Dota matches going for 45 minutes, an hour. And that wow. doesn't interest me. Like, one multiplayer match, that's too much. That's too much of a time investment for me. And, and, and are you using your uh, mouse and keyboard when you play? Mouse and keyboard, yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. If you're familiar with, like, how to control, like, Diablo on a PC, it's, yeah. it's going to come yep. pretty easily. Okay. Yeah, I'd be used to that. Um, but, I mean, like Diablo, I think it would come perfectly to a console. It's a big name. I mean, if anybody's got a chance at putting a MOBA on a console... Holy it's shit! Blizzard. This this thing would be huge on a console because it, it, all you got to do is just map the Diablo controls right over to it. I think it would be great. Yeah, uh, the thing is, I've never played a MOBA before. I know what it is. It's usually a six man free for all. Everybody's going in there fighting each other. Yeah, so basically you got two bases, right? And then you got um, you got three different like made paths between the bases, uh, and every I don't know how long, twenty seconds or so. Your base spawns a whole bunch of like little minion dudes, and the minion dudes run at the other base, and you can use those guys as cover. So you, you go in. Your goal is to destroy the other base. The other team's goal is to destroy your base, and I, 
you basically just kind of clash at it. You can kill other people. If you die, you have like a respawn timer. You got to wait to come back. Uh, during the match, you level up your character. So as you during the match, your character gets stronger and stronger and stronger. But then that pro progress resets for the next match. Um, but in this one, you can also upgrade your character just by playing matches. So uh, my Raynor, I think, is level 2, and I've unlocked a new ability that I didn't have before that I start with now. Uh, wow. So stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. Plus my, my me, Briar Rabbit, I'm also gaining experience. I don't know what that does yet. <laughs> I haven't played it long enough to figure out what that does yet. There are a ton of characters to choose from. Uh, you can attain them in two different ways. You can either use in-game currency, gold, to buy them. Uh, and so far, I've been getting plenty of gold to like feel like I'm going to just keep progressing and buying stuff that way. Or you can spend like $3.99 on a character and uh, get them like instantly. Then each each character has different costumes. Some of them are available just through in-game currency gold. Some of them are just available by paying for them with real money. Yeah. Uh, so you know it's a free game. It's free to play. But then if you want to support the developer by you know buying some other stuff, you can do that. But it's not going to. It's not. It's not like you're not buying really a bow and arrow that's a two shot kill. You know, yeah. it's like <laughs> you're not. You're not. You're not buying anything that's like more powerful than anybody. It's else. cosmetic, it's cosmetic stuff, yeah. stuff. Yeah. So I, I got to tell you, I'm really, I'm really enjoying it. It's. I find it somewhat relaxing. I don't think other people feel that way about mobas, but I do. Like it's just kind of running around, playing with my teammates, uh, using the minions. It's like a strategic kind of thinking game. Uh, so like. I'm used to playing shooters a lot, uh, which are pretty high energy. This is just kind of fun. I'm I'm really enjoying myself. I'm learning. I'm not good. I'm just learning. Well, I'm gonna check this out. I'm gonna check this out no matter what. You said it's on Mac and PC. Yeah, it's on Mac and PC. No, that's not cross. Play. Download Windows 8. That's not cross play, right? You can't play against Mac players on PC. Uh, I have no idea. Because it's if it's a relaxing game for you. It might be the same way for me. I could see you now, Briar, just listening to Kenny G going at it. Um, I was listening to Nina Simone, actually. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I don't even know who those Robbie, people are. Robbie has no idea. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> that was back when they made real music, Robbie. It's all good. Mm. Yeah, see, but... the, the chicken, right? He talks with a southern accent. <laughs> Like an old gentleman, right? Like Colonel Sanders, but he's a chicken. That's oh, <laughs> weird. <laughs> Before your time, Robbie. It's all good, man. All right, guys. So, Robbie, uh, have you only been playing uh, the, the beta this week, or do you have anything else you want to talk about? Um, I was thinking we could get into the Taken King news, but I'm sure Briar's already talked about that nonstop, and he doesn't want to talk about it anymore. What are we kidding? He can talk about Destiny for the rest of his life. But... <laughs> Briar, you want to do it? Uh, I mean, there's so much of it, and I, I, I'll be honest with you. Like, I would refer you to the Planet Destiny podcast for this, mm -hmm. or check out PlanetDestiny.com uh, because the amount of information that came out of their Twitch reveal this week Tons, was so stupendous. Uh, that game is changing in very big ways. Uh, R.I.P. Gallagher. Pretty much, no, yeah. Not, not necessarily. That's well, that's year two anyway. But so. That's not really the truth of the matter. Um, we're getting we're getting year two exotics, right? That are going to be upgraded from year one exotics. Only yeah, some like Thunder Lord. Last word, I think Hawkman is getting one. Soros. Yeah. Uh, truth is getting year two version. Yeah. yeah so there's so some there's some are some aren't. Uh, one of the ones that's getting left behind is Galahorn. But uh, I've got a real sneaking suspicion, a strong suspicion that you know we're going to get two more DLCs next year. And maybe we'll see some more of the year one stuff get upgraded in the first DLC. It's more of the year one stuff get upgraded in the second DLC. They just don't want to spill all this good stuff in the in the Taken King. We're also getting all brand new exotics, which frankly I'm way more excited about than playing with the Gallahorn for another fucking year. So, Pretty much, honestly. <laughs> like, all these fucking people about. crying about the Gallahorn. I'm not on your side. You <laughs> like keep using the same weapons for Yeah, that's like, the most powerful gun I have. It's like the I know, but gun I like have. the problem with it though is that it's so much more powerful than everything else that it's the only gun you should really be using, right? It's like yeah. 
There's no situation that the Gallahorn isn't good with. <laughs> it's just like Gallahorn. It's like, uh, like what should I use? Oh, Gallahorn. Yeah. I've been collecting weapons for a year. I've got you know dozens of weapons, and the Gallahorn is always the right choice. It's That's always... a failure. <laughs> it's a failure in game design for Bungie, and, and I'm glad to yeah. see that they're fixing it. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. And as it's... far as the year two exotics go, that they're bringing back, yeah, like Thunderlord and Soros. I mean. Honestly, at first I was like, that's cool, but now I'm thinking, like, who really cares? Like, do you want to use the same weapons for another year? Like, I want to get the new stuff. That looks awesome. Like, the Vested Dynasty is now in the game, the 347. Yeah. I think the Fate of All Fools might be there. Like, there's a lot of cool new guns. The uh, Sleeper Stimulant. Like, there's so much cool new stuff. Yeah, so. I'm way more excited for the new stuff than I am for the upgraded old stuff. Yeah. Uh, although that Black Soros does look sexy as hell. And you oh, do have that increased fall space for the Black Soros. Is it, yeah. as nice as, is it as nice as the Black Hammer? No. Oh, okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, double Vault Space, that was big news. Uh, that's something that I sorely need. Um, I'm, I'll be honest with you, I'm, I'm a little disappointed that they only doubled it. Yeah. I know that's like... <laughs> yeah, I, I thought they were going to do like three or four pages or something like that. But You know, because inventory just gets filled up so fast in that game. But, you know, it's a start. Hopefully, uh, Double in the Vault Space will get us to Destiny 2, and then they can really make some more fundamental cha changes with Destiny 2. Uh, their new, like, kind of kiosk system, the new way of upgrading weapons is very, very cool. To upgrade weapons in the Taken King, you're basically going to feed other weapons to it. So if you've got, like, a, if you got a really cool scout rifle that you found, and it's got 280 attack... Uh, you might have another scout rifle that's got 300 attack, but you just don't like the perks on it that much, so you could feed that higher attack-valued weapon to the lower attack-value weapon to upgrade the lower one, right? That's awesome. Isn't that cool? So that what, crazy. to me, what that, this is going to do is replace the reforging system, which I think was a failed experiment, and it's going to give, give a level of customization that feels unique to me and my guardian, right? Because... I put in the time, I put in the effort to make my uh, scout rifle perfect because it's mine and mine alone, right? It's it's not just going to the to the gunsmith and spending the Mozilite until I get the perfect roll like Reforging was. This is going to be I happen to get an awesome roll, and now I'm gonna I'm gonna savor that that weapon. I think it's a cool system. Yeah, and I think it gives a lot. It gives a lot more purpose to meaningless weapons. You know, uh, weapons you right. normally just dismantle and get rid of. Now you can take certain perks and add them to something that you care about. So I think it it really gives the whole game as a, in general a lot more meaning and, and more focus. So it's it's awesome. It's yeah, really, really awesome. Yeah, um, you know, so most of the stuff that they revealed is kind of like this, like housekeeping stuff. Um, next week we're gonna see, I believe. Are we going to the Dreadnought next week for the Twitch reveal? I think so, yeah. yeah. So we're going to see the new patrol zone um, for the Taken King, and that should be really exciting. I've heard a lot about it. It just it sounds like it's going to be completely different than anything we're used to in Destiny, and that has Definitely. me very excited. But uh, we got a little bit of news here, and we're running a fucking low on time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you know, we started yes, a little yeah. late. It's okay, man. <laughs> Yeah, we, we can get through these real quick. These guys, they came to see us do this, so let's go ahead and do it. First little bit of news, guys. Sony announces date and times for its Paris Games Week conference. Robbie? So people are really hyping this up. Like, this is going to be equal to, like, a Gamescom or an E3 conference, and it sounds like it could be. Like, Sony skipped Gamescom, as we all know. Microsoft was there in full force, but this is kind of their chance to come back with all these new announcements. And, of course, there's going to be a new PlayStation experience this year as well, so... Yeah, I mean, this could be really cool. So this will be kind of like an E3 conference, I guess. I, I think it's cool. I don't know if, if I'm super excited about it. Sony's definitely got some surprises, you know, up their sleeve. But are they going to be the surprises that people really want to see? I don't know. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I guess time will tell. You know, Paris Games Week has never been something that people have just swooned over. Gamescom, E3, Tokyo Game Show, that's what people really want yeah. to see the most. So It's October 27th, 9 a.m. Pacific time is when it will happen. All right. There so. you go. We'll, we'll be there in spirit. We'll let you guys know what happens. The timing of it seems weird. It's like right before the, right before all the big games come out in November. It's like yep. I don't see. We're not going to see any announcements for this year. Yeah, that'll be next year. 
All right, moving on. Rainbow Six Siege has been delayed to de- to December first. I didn't even know the original release date. For some reason, it slipped my mind. I think it was October thirteenth. I want to say so. It's been about delayed by about two months, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be playing the beta as well. I signed up for that. I mean, this game looks super cool. I love the tacticalness of it. How you can like build up these barricades and these walls, and you kind of shuffle people along, and it's I don't, Rainbow Six is really fun, and this game looks awesome. Like, well, this I'm is a, a little sad. This is a totally different Rainbow Six. Rainbow Six is awesome, but this is something completely out of the field of, of reference from their old games. This is something a little bit more slow, a little bit more deliberate and thoughtful, uh, and I think I'm going to like it a lot, too, because it reminds me of The Last of Us. Sorry, Briar. It does. Uh, you got these five versus five teams. you really got to put a lot of thought into what you're doing, uh, and it looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. I did not sign up for the beta, Robbie. You should have told me about it. Damn it, because I want to play that game. <laughs> I could have grabbed you an extra beta code. Oh, well. Yeah, well, thanks a lot. But uh, December 1st, uh, that'll be another game. I'll definitely be picking that one up. All right. Anybody else want to continue? Bungie posts job opening for PC compatibility testers. So there were Ooh. things like must-have experience working on a PC, must be knowledgeable of PC hardware. This tells me Destiny might be coming to PC finally. What do, what do you think, Mr. Rabbit? Is that That'd a be cool. Um, weird, but cool. Briar will be playing Destiny Day 1 on his Windows 8 PC yes! right here. Yes. I'm hanging up on you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. This, this, doesn't, this doesn't confirm Destiny on PC by any means. But, it gives... Uh, it's interesting. So, yeah. All right, so moving on. Fallout 4 can outsell Skyrim according to Bethesda PR Pete Hines. Uh, I think that's like a no-brainer, honestly. Do you guys think it will? Yeah. yeah. I think so. <laughs> Hell yeah, come on. Skyrim sold 20 million know, copies right? around there. Like, it was a huge success, but mm-hmm. I mean, just everyone's going to buy this game on day one. You know you're going to get it. I mean, it's going to make a billion dollars. People are going to sell food stamps to buy this game, okay? <laughs> Anywhere I talk to people who play video <laughs> games, people are talking about Fallout 4. This Everybody. is, yeah. without a doubt, the most antis- anticipated game of this year. Yeah. Like, sure. There's huge. no doubt about it. Yeah. There's, um, there's nothing even close, I don't think. No. Uh, so, uh, like, it's, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know. You think it'll do, like, Grand Theft Auto V numbers? I, I don't know if it'll, it'll, it'll do that, but because GTA V, I think it has a, a broader um, install base, and, and more people really know about Grand Theft Auto. Uh, but I think that, I think Fallout 4 will probably be their best-selling game of all time. It'll definitely be one of the fastest-selling games, I think, like, within the first few days or 24 hours or something. Like, it's going to sell like mad, like crazy. I mean, yeah. This is the only game that has hype like Half-Life 3. This game has had hype like that for so long. Uh, and, and I think that everybody's anticipating this. You know? I, I Everyone think and their grandma and mother is going to be buying this. You know what? Yeah, I, I think it's going to be big news. Um, I don't know if it'll, if it'll sell like GTA 5. That's like the craziest selling game of all time. But uh, Fallout 4 will definitely be Bethesda's number one selling game for sure. It's, it's, to me, that's a no-brainer. Yeah, to me it is too. Yeah. I, I, the pre-orders have got to be off the chart. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm sure they look at their pre-orders like, how many have we got? Oh, 25 billion? Yeah, that seems pretty good. Yeah, go look at forum them. threads about how p- pissed people are that they can't buy the... Pit Boy. Yeah, the Pit Boy. Yep, I didn't get one either. I'm going to be eBaying that shit. All right, guys. <laughs> continuing on with our last story, uh, Xbox Executive says, we're doing things on the Xbox One that can't be done on PS4. Balance yeah! compatibility, uh, the cloud... Some other stuff, yeah. I mean, that's right, and they're saying, like, how, oh, it gives us an advantage and all that. Well, I guess. I don't know. Well, uh, backwards compatibility is big, and once that feature hits, and uh, the people who haven't bought a next-gen or current-gen console yet find out that they can play all their 360 games on their Xbox One, that's going to be a selling feature. Huge selling feature. For sure. Cross-play and cross-buy with PC, that's a nice feature, too, I don't know if it's a system seller. No. And uh, I don't think the yeah, cloud man. is actually... Who, Go ahead, I'm who sorry. cares about that that much? It's a perk, you know? It's like having a woman who can yeah. trace, trace elk. I mean, it's not like... What? That, no. about, but it's a perk. That's <laughs> 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 no, <laughs> What the hell was that? <laughs> like, it's a real <laughs> thing. I'm sorry, I'm just being me, okay? But, yeah, no, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, um, I, I don't 
<laughs> it, it's just one of those things. It's what, just a, a check on the list of things that they have. You know, I don't know about the cloud yet. I want to see what that's actually capable of. If it's really a physical or a visual difference as far as what you can accomplish on the Xbox One after this cloud, re this idea becomes a reality, that'll be a system seller. But I think the number one thing they got going for themselves right now is backwards compatibility. They're going to announce 100 new games next month. Uh, the request for Black Ops 2 and Red Dead Redemption. So people are actually really looking forward to playing their old games on their Xbox One. Yeah, well, a lot of people had to sell the 360 to buy an Xbox One, so yeah, it makes yeah. sense. Yeah, and yeah. PS3 to buy a PS4. I've seen a lot of that, too. The other thing about cross-play and cross-buy for PC is that most people buy PC games on Steam. Mm -hmm. So that's not going to work. Yeah. You know, you, you buy mm -hmm. if you go and buy a game on Steam, it's not going to work with the Xbox One store. You're going to have to buy it on the Windows store. I Absolutely. guarantee it. Like I almost guarantee it. Most I can't guarantee it. But. but see, the thing yeah. about this, yeah. the thing about this statement, I don't know if they can actually say that. Of course, the Xbox One and PS4 are different, but PlayStation 4 has their own, I guess you'd call it cloud service as well. They bought uh, what's the name of it? I'm trying to remember. Got okay. They bought Gaikai, which is something really similar to their own cloud service. So if Sony really jumped into this bandwagon as well, they'd have their own cloud that could could help power PlayStation 4 games. I don't know about PlayStation 4 with backwards compatibility. That would be awesome. Uh, but as it, as it looks right no now, way. yeah, as it looks right now, Xbox has a lot of good things going for itself uh, at the end of this year, and backwards compatibility is the number one. You'd have to duct tape a PS3 Slim onto your PS4 to get that to work. <laughs> that stupid cell oh, processor goodness. still biting Sony in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, you're right. You're right. There's a piece of news I forgot to include in here as well, is that the mm -hmm. uh, PlayStation experience is confirmed this year for December 5th, I believe. So that's happening, and there's going to be a conference. You guys excited about that? No. I, I don't know. No. Let me, let me ask you. Let me ask you. I mean, I'm I'm content with all my games right now. You know, I got all the systems, and then I try to get the new stuff when it comes out. I'm enjoying it. Uh, so, I'm just happy when it comes out. But if Sony did announce something that excited you, like if you could predict something exciting coming out of the PlayStation experience, what would you predict? Uh, well, we'll see. We'll see uh, trailers probably for games that are coming out in 2016 and 2017. But the only reason I'm not excited about it is it's so far away. Like, there's so much going on in the next few months. This PlayStation experience is like this is not on my radar right now. Either That's you guys, right. get, are either you guys getting the Phantom Pain? Are we still? No. Are no. we still? We are we all in agreement that the Beastly Thoughts crew will not support this game? Well, I don't really like Metal Gear Solid anyway. <laughs> oh, <God damn laughs> oh, it's not a big sacrifice <laughs> for me. <laughs> I love Metal Gear. Are you I know. Crazy? I know. Metal Gear is so good. Okay, well, look. So we I can, can take a hard stance on this. No, I will <laughs> not be getting All right, well, two-thirds of the Beastly Thoughts crew will not be buying this game. <laughs> See, here's the thing, because I played Ground Zeroes when it came out. I thought it was amazing. I absolutely loved it. I didn't like the other Metal Gear games, because I was kind of skeptical about it, but I absolutely loved it. So I'm like, Phantom Pain is going to be a bigger open-world version of that. Hell yes, I'm in. But, Wait, man, after all this... Used. But that way Konami is, doesn't get any money for it. Yeah, the problem is, with all this Konami and Kojima controversy, like, and the fact that Kojima and his team has been shut down, he probably won't see a cent of the money for this game. I'm not supporting Konami. If Konami is the one who's getting the money for this, no way I'm buying this game. Screw you. Like, just, no, I'm not doing that. Well, we should get together and hijack one of those 18-wheelers filled with this game and distribute them for free in the street like the Joker in Batman Returns. I want the views <laughs> of the Beastly Gamer do not reflect... The thoughts and opinions of the Beastly Thought Show. <laughs> Any illegal activity expressed by the Beastly Gamer. <laughs> it's good as it is alone, damn it. Good. Oh, my yeah. So uh, I, made a, I made a major life decision. I'm going to get off video games for a little while here. Oh, shit. Major life no. decision, right? Every car, every vehicle I've ever bought has been all about passion. If you can't if you can't drive it in Gran Turismo or in Ivan Stewart's off-road, I didn't want anything to do with it. Holy shit. What? I've never bought something that I wasn't completely passionate about. Anyway, I'll give you some examples. My last vehicle purchase was a Jeep Wrangler. Love my Jeep Wrangler. Love rolling around in that thing with the top off and the doors off. Awesome. Car before that was a Toyota Tacoma uh, with the off-road package. Love yeah. that thing. Oh, God, I love that truck. Before that, I had a little red sports car. 
That thing was a real piece of shit, but I loved it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> At least he had the passion. <laughs> I blew that motor, and I went through wheels. I actually went through a set of tires in that car in five months. Completely, oh, wow. completely bald. <laughs> Jesus. I beat the snot out of that car, Damn. and it looked like it. I bought a motorcycle that has the same engine in it as a Honda Civic. What? Yeah, it's a 160 oh, wow. horsepower motorcycle. Like that's that's how I've purchased vehicles. So I got married last year. You guys know this, right? Yeah, I know uh, the date. My first first post marriage with kids vehicle purchase has been torque. Let us guess. Let us guess the car. Okay. Um. Honda Passport. What's that? Is that a minivan? No, it's an SUV. I don't know no. what that is either. No. Robbie, go ahead. Just say uh, El Torino. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that. Uh, you get like a Dodge Caravan minivan or something? I got a used Subaru Brat because it's a, it's got seats in the back, right? Yeah? It's perfect. I, cause, you know, it's I called a what? Now. I got to be responsible. Subaru Brat. You never you seen these? With no. the seats in the back? Have you ever seen an El Camino? Yes. Okay, imagine that made by Subaru, but oh. two seats are bolted in the bed. What? It's perfect. I'm telling you, Beastly, it's the I it's want the pictures on solution. Twitter. I get to take these kids to, to school, but I don't have to smell that teenager funk. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, daddy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I got a picture here, FYI. I bought a four-door sedan. Can you believe that? Holy a four-door sedan. <laughs> four oh. doors. When I was I was looking at the leg room. Leg room! <laughs> You're so silly sometimes. Oh, man, man. <laughs> the oh. leg room! <laughs> That's wonderful, Briar. Thank you. It was awful, Thank you for man. sharing. It was awful. We gotta grow up sometime, bro. I don't want to. I don't want to. I want to get back on Oprah. How the hell do you think I feel? Kate's riding around in a nice little sports car, and I'm pulling up in a red fucking uh, Chrysler Town and Country, mm-hmm. right? Looking like a bald soccer mom with a beard. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Come on. All right, should we ro- ro- wrap this one up? Yeah, I'm man. Off the rail. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, guys, for watching the show today. Be sure to leave some comments below. If you got questions for us, just ask them, damn it. We will answer them. Yes, that's, that's important, too. Four-door fucking sedan. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you guys so much. Everybody those have bolted, a great day. I want to see those bolted seats in the back.